This is the King Chasing Podcast, where we keep Christ at the center of athletics. Here's your host, Brandon Gilmore. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm Brandon, and this is the King Chasing Podcast. As always, thanks for joining us, and please make sure to visit our website at thenccaa.org for more King Chasing content. Well, today's guest is Sarah Young, the Director of College Women's Ministry at Global Golf, and I'm so excited for you to hear her powerful testimony. Sarah, a native of New Zealand, represented her country for several years as a golfer in high school and went on to play college golf at Oklahoma State University and Kent State University. In college, she earned all Big 12 honors, all Mid-American Conference honors, and was named the prestigious 2010 Kim Moore Spirit Award winner by the National Golf Coaches Association. Sarah also had coaching stints at Colorado State University and University of Tulsa. Thanks for listening today, and I hope you enjoy my conversation with Sarah. Well, hey, Sarah, welcome to King Chasing. How are you doing today? Hey, Brendan, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Love, love to have you on today. Um, now, I know you grew up uh, in New Zealand. I'm curious uh, what that was like and uh, how you first got uh, into playing sports as a child. Yeah, so I'm from New Zealand. I often get asked if I'm from Australia, and I graciously tell them I'm cousins with Australians, but New Zealand <laughs> is uh, a bit further away from there. Um, I grew up in a small country town in New Zealand, and I first was, I'm a twin, an identical twin, one of four girls. My dad, uh, I think he dreamed of having at least one son so he could train him up to be a soccer player. My dad was from Belfast in Ireland. And so I became his little buddy and he convinced <laughs> me that I had the skill to be on the Manchester United soccer team. So my dream was to play professional soccer from the young age of probably five or six or seven years old. Um, and then, uh, when I was around 10 or 12, I was racing my twin sister home from school and, uh, I crashed my bike, which put an end to my soccer career. And I came across golf after that. So, um, in a nutshell, that was kind of my, my journey into, into playing golf. Okay. What, what was, uh, those first few years, uh, like for you as you kind of ventured into the golf world? Uh, it was pretty fun, actually. I, um, looking back, can see people that have been put in my path purposefully. And there was this beautiful woman. Uh, she was about 60 or 70 years older than me. And we became really good friends. And she kind of took me under her wing. And she taught me everything. She drove me around the country, uh, countryside playing golf. And then uh, by the age of about 14, I made my first New Zealand squad. Um, development squad, high performance squad, and uh, just got access to coaches that really taught me the game of golf. And uh, then I was able to go on to represent New Zealand about the age of 16. Um, and so from there, I golf has become my life. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty incredible to, to be able to represent your country. Um, and, and I know you got to play in, in Fiji and Malaysia and some, mm -hmm. some pretty amazing places. So what are some of your favorite memories during that time? Yeah. Now, I do have to tell you that New Zealand's a small country. So there's, at the time, there was about three and a half million people in New Zealand. And so I know I'm talking, I'm in now in America and America's a massive country. So I was pretty blessed to be able to have the opportunity to do these things. My favorite memory, I would say, from Fiji, uh, we were given caddies from local the local village. And so um, I, <laughs> I became friends with, with my caddy, and it just gave me this huge appreciation for the journey that I was on. Uh, she, we would, at the end of the day, um, we would be waiting at the bus stop to – um, I would go to my beautiful resort where we had endless amount of food and beautiful pools to swim in. And I'm in Fiji. We're drinking the real Fiji water, right? You know, right. the Fiji mineral water. Yeah. And then yep. her bus would come along. You know, there were no windows in it and it was rickety. And she would drive off to, to her village where I was. there was this contrast of two different worlds. And you could see the village from 
over the fence of the of the resort we were staying in and just very quickly at a young age I realized um, I wasn't a believer at the time but I knew that this this gift we have of being in golf this is a world that not a lot of people get to experience and um, so from that that was my memory from Fiji Uh, my memory from Malaysia was pretty hilarious memory Um, back then I was pretty bold and uh, I could have asked anything and I remember the final uh, closing ceremony of the Malaysian Women's Open and we had the Malaysian Queen there right and so there's this big party going on and all this Malaysian music was being played and I went up to the DJ and I said hey DJ do you have any English music and he was like oh no 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 and he pointed he was like the Queen's here and I was like oh no 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 and then I saw he had a record there that said ABBA and I was like oh put on ABBA put on ABBA so he put on (laughs) ABBA Dancing Queen and I ran over to the Queen's table and I got her up and I went and I danced with the wow. Malaysian Queen to Dancing Queen. So those are my two claim, my claim to fame uh, playing amateur golf. That's yeah. amazing. Is yeah. there photographic evidence of this? Exactly. Anywhere? There's not. It could be a story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, there you um, go. Yeah. But, so. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, can you share how you ended up from uh, New Zealand all the way to Oklahoma uh, to play golf at uh, Oklahoma State University. Yeah, so I was playing um, our New Zealand squad. Uh, We were playing in Australia, which is about a three-hour flight away, and uh, it was an international event. And at this international event, I met the Oklahoma State coach. She, at the time, was playing for Canada, and she she welcomed me onto the team. And uh, I flew home, and I said to my parents, hey, um, I'm going to America in, in August to go to school. And they were like, okay. So um, <laughs> it was, I think if they knew back then, I was 19 years old, um, now 35. And I think that if they knew that I would never really return to New Zealand to live, they may have been a little bit more apprehensive in, in letting me come over here. But Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you had quite the freshman year uh, there. Uh, you became the fourth freshman in school history to earn all Big 12 honors. Uh, things were going well. It was training towards a professional career. Uh, but then you were involved in a car accident over Christmas break in 2007. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was your recovery journey like as you tried to uh, get back in the game of golf after that? Yeah, that was a journey. Um... I would say, um, again, back then, I I wasn't a believer. I I arrived in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Now, I grew up on an island where there was just always water around and mountains around. Um, And I arrived in Stillwater, Oklahoma, which was the middle of America. And there was just this massive culture shock. Um, I wasn't really um, sure of of a lot of things. I knew that I wanted to be the best golfer that I could possibly be. Um, I was at this high performance place where golf quickly became my identity. And, um, and through that, when golf wasn't going where I needed it to be, or I always want to, I kind of fell into things that, um, were taking me away from, um, who I was, I guess, as a person. Um, then to add on top of that, I have this car accident. Um, I lost my memory. I had a traumatic brain injury. Um, Traumatic brain injury can mean lots of things, but really it was bleeding to my brain. Um, So I lost my memory, my cognitive ability, um, and more than anything, the accident happened when I was in New Zealand. So uh, I wasn't able to fly back to America and get into what I was doing before, right? I was Sarah Mm. Bradley, the golfer. Um, Sarah Bradley, the golfer who lived in America. Um, So when I would go and I'd look in the mirror um, and wonder who it was looking back at me because I couldn't play golf. I wasn't living in America and I just kind of had everything that I identified myself by ripped away. Um, And like I said, I I wasn't a a follower of Christ. And so I, I was, my whole world was, was shaken. I did not know what I could do. And on top of that, I didn't have a memory. So uh, I couldn't remember yesterday. I didn't know what was happening tomorrow. And so I just felt like I was in limbo. Um, And part of my recovery was I had to keep journals every day. 
um, had to keep journals that tracked the progress of my recovery. Um, and I would say if I was giving anyone um, encouragement on how to get over um, any type of um, any type of injury or any type of setback is actually to look back at some of the good things that have happened in the past as, a, as an encouragement that you can overcome things. Um, but it kind of led me into really like the search of like, why am I here? What has kept me here? Um, I'll tell you about those, those, like just a quick story on the journals that I kept. Um, again, I had no memory, but there is a story in these journals and one of them is of, um, I met a dog one day, his name was Oscar, and I was sleeping outside my house because I had a head injury, um, I was always having to sleep, and this golden Labrador, I woke up and this golden Labrador was standing over me, and like, I had no energy, I just sat with him all day, but then I finally called the, the number that was on his name tag, and so I called the name tag. And the guy said, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm out of town. I can't come pick him up. I'll send my roommate over to come get him. And so his roommate came over, knocked on the door. I gave him Oscar and the roommate said to me, he goes, hey, like what happened to your shoulder? My shoulder was dislocated. I had stuff and I was like, oh, nothing. I was in a car accident. And he goes, oh, you weren't on the, in the car accident by the golf course, were you? And I said, well, actually, yeah, that was me. And he goes, so crazy, Oscar. Oscar's owner was a firefighter and he was there that day and it took them two hours wow. to get this girl out of the car um, they were sure that she was dead on the scene but they haven't heard anything since like how is she do you wow. know if she survived and I was like huh well I was the only girl in that accident and and I'm fine I just need to get my shoulder better and then I can get back to America you see, when you have a head injury, it's an invisible injury. Like, you can't actually tell that something's wrong with you. Um, and so I didn't know that there was something wrong with me. Um, and so it just kind of was, like, stories like this were a realization of how um, lucky I was to be alive back then. Again, I didn't know Christ, but it sent me on the search of, like, okay, why am I here? Who's kept me here? What is my purpose? Um, so that's the yeah. story of, of the head injury. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, your journey uh, events eventually led you to transfer to Kent State mm -hmm. University. Uh, you were named the prestigious 2010 Kim Moore Spirit Award winner by the National Golf Coaches Association. You earned second team all Mid-American uh, Conference honors your two years there. And uh, you placed third at the Mid-American Conference Championships your senior year. So that's that's a lot of stuff that uh, you were able to accomplish. Um, and I'm curious, you know, after overcoming all the adversity, the challenges that you faced um, to still accomplish so much, you mentioned a little bit of advice you'd have for people facing adversity, but um, that's such an amazing story of overcoming. I'm just curious um, if you have any other tidbits of advice for anybody who's who's facing adversity, whether it's injuries or whatever it may be that, that they have in front of them. Brandon, that kind of cracks me up because I actually had very little memory of my time in, at Kent State, probably because I was still recovering from my head injury. But um, Right. Um, but I would say I just always go back to, I love, I love Psalm 139, where he talks about, for I, all my days are planned for you. I've written them all in the book before you came to be. And so I think of those types of things. And I'm like, all of the, the stuff, like I just shared about a little bit about my head injury. There's so many more things in, amongst, in amongst all of that. But he's used every detail of my life to bring me to where I am today. And so my encouragement to the to the girls or to anyone going through the struggle is like there is a plan and a purpose for for your struggle even though it's really hard in the moment and in the time um i always think of like there's so many analogies throughout the bible which scripture is incredible about um just how you know we're clay in the potter's hands and um how we've been how we can be refined and how he's making us into um into his image and becoming more christ-like and so the encouragement I would have would be just to lean into the word of God um, 
and to and to keep on going and glorifying him um, one of the hardest um, commands in the bible i think is rejoice always so in all things rejoice like even in in the hard moments like rejoice and praise uh, mm. And in Psalm 39, for you're fearfully and wonderfully made, like he's created you perfectly. Um, oh, that's good stuff. Uh, can you share how you came to know Christ uh, and what role your relationship with him mm -hmm. uh, has played and is continuing to play in your journey? Yeah. So I was searching, like I mentioned earlier, like I searched a lot. And I did not want Christianity to be the thing I was searching for. So I tried every other world religion you could possibly imagine. Um, it's almost kind of popular to get into like those Eastern religions like Buddhism. And um, I practice Qigong and Tai Chi and all these like energy things, um, which actually I think the Lord actually helped use to quiet my mind and heal my brain. Um, but I, I remember distinctly this one day, and it was January because I just left New Zealand. New Zealand, January is beautiful. It is like sunshine. You're at the beach. Life is good in New Zealand in January. But I had to leave and come back to Ohio in January. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have been to Ohio in January, but there is like this thing called lake effect snow, which New Zealanders, I don't think, survive very well um, and like effect snow. So here I am walking across, uh, walking across campus. Um, I had just come um, from this golfing mecca at, at Oklahoma State. Like it was a, a golfer's dream being at Oklahoma State. And now here I am up in, up in Ohio thinking like, what has happened to my life? Like, how did I get here? What is my purpose? Like just mad at life. And I look up at 7.30 in the morning and I see this guy, a blind guy walking towards me and going, la da 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 la da da like singing at the top of his, his lungs. And there was no one else around. And I was mad at his joy. I was like, why is he so happy? And we happened to be walking into the same building and I held the door open for him and he walked in and he said, thank you. And I said, oh, no worries. And he dropped his cane and he says, oh, you're a New Zealander. And I looked at him, I was like, yeah. And he goes, oh, my pastor is from New Zealand, Pastor Murray. And I went, great, you know. And then he said to me, well, what day were you born? And I said, May 18th. And he said, what year? And I said, 1987. And he goes, oh, you were born on a Monday. And I quickly, like, Googled it on my phone. And I'm like, how do you know that? And he goes, well, I, I was born blind, but the Lord has blessed me with other, other things. And I went, oh, okay. And anyway, I said, okay, see you later. And he stopped me and he said, hey, um, have you ever seen me before? And I kind of was like, well, yeah. And he goes, next time you see me on campus, can you stop me and say hi? Because I won't, I won't see you. And so, of course, I was like, oh, of course I will, yeah. Well, then in the coming months, whenever I was like feeling sad or feeling down or feeling depressed or hating the situation I was in, um, he would – inconveniently crossed my path and I had this mm, in my heart of like oh, I need to stop and say hi to Michael Michael was his name and uh so every time I, I saw him he would like give me a hug and tell me Jesus loves you and then one day he led me he said do you do you trust me and I said oh yeah we've become friends and he said well close your eyes um I'm gonna I'm gonna lead you and it was the real thing of lead, of the blind leading the blind, right? So he led me down to the middle of, um, of campus. It was a busy school day. It was midday. And he pulled out his little Braille, um, the thing that they can read off, Braille, Braille. And he started sharing the gospel with me for he was pierced for my transgressions. He was, and he just started weeping and he shared the gospel. And I was sitting there going, it's kind of, you know, like, okay. Um, and then we left and we didn't see each other for a couple of months and I flew back to New Zealand um, and I was in New Zealand and uh, walking um, around a lake again, like mad at my life. I thought I wanted to be in New Zealand and I didn't want to be there either. I didn't want to be in Ohio. I didn't want to be in New Zealand. Didn't really, didn't know what I wanted. Um, and as I was walking around 
this um, this late and I had an iPod on in my ears and um, the song called Lead Me to the Cross came on on my iPod and I pulled it out and I was like, what is this? Like, how did this get here? Um, but as I listened to the lyrics, I just wondered, I'm like, really? Like, really, God? Are you there? Because I have a hard time believing, like, this has happened, this has happened, like, my golf, you know, I just listed all the reasons why, like, God hasn't been showing up in my life, and I really said, if you're real, you have to show me, because I have a hard time believing, and I carried on walking, and as I turned the corner, um, there ridden across the dirt, in this dirt path, was, I love you, Sarah. Now, my first reaction was, there's a lot of Sarahs in my hometown, <laughs> like, and then I realized, I was like, wow, wow, this is for me. Wow, he loves me. How can he love me? Like, I am like nothing. I am like useless. I am, I'm nothing. I've brought him nothing. I've done nothing. I've done awful, all these awful things. Um, but I just really felt this love. And so um, in that moment, I chose to, to follow the Lord and uh, did not know how to. Um, but I would have, I, I had to board a plane the next day to come back to the United States. And, um, along the way, the Lord would place people in my path that would direct me to him. And, uh, and it's been this journey of, uh, sanctification of becoming Christ-like and it hasn't been comfortable, but it's been, it's been beautiful. And, um, he's really taken me by his grace, um, from death to life. And so um, has radically ha has radically saved me um, from the path of destruction that I was on. So I'm so thankful. Yeah, that's an incredible testimony. Um, now, after several years uh, in the coaching ranks at Colorado State University and then University of Tulsa, uh, you're now the director of women's college golf ministry with Global Golf. Uh, can you share what Global Golf is and some of the ministries you all do? Yeah. Uh, so after coaching, um, I, uh, I'm, during, during coaching, I met my now husband, Kyle, and we're married and we live here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, and um, the first year of marriage, I, I got out of coaching and I was asked to start a women's ministry at uh, my church here in Tulsa. It's a PCA church. Um, and so I learned a lot uh, uh, working for a church, I went. I learned a lot about um, theology and the importance of of biblical teaching, and um, and then I was called into ministry by um, uh, a woman who runs Global Golf. She's a director of Global Golf, but she's over the professional side of women's golf. So she's out on all the professional tours, the LPGA, and she's been out there for years. And um, she called me and she said, hey, Sarah, would you consider starting a college women's golf ministry? Um, it was actually the third time over the last three years that we had been talking. And this time my heart was ready and I was ready for it. And so I, I spent um, about six months fundraising. And then we kicked off the women's golf ministry in January 2020, um, right before COVID hit. Yeah. And that was a shock, but I knew it was the timing of the Lord and I wasn't sure what he was up to, but it was beautiful because then this world of Zoom came on, right? So I met um, girls from all over the country with um, girls in California, girls in South Carolina, girls like up in Michigan, um, down in Texas, here in Oklahoma, um, and learning to do one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. And so um, for from 2020 to up until even today, uh, I meet with girls across the country via phone, via FaceTime, um, and we just do life one-on-one. -on -one, um, I, I like to say discipleship, mentoring. We read the Bible together. We pray. Sometimes it's just chats like, hey, how are you doing? How can I be praying for you? Um, and I love it because I get to know everything about these girls. I get to encourage them. Um, I like to say I've been through everything a possibly a college athlete could go through. I've gone through the transferring. I've gone through um, being in highs and lows, being in the partying scene, not wanting to be in the partying scene. Um, I'm married to a guy who hasn't done any of that 
he's known Christ his whole life. So when I meet girls who have known Christ their whole lives, I can actually align with them because my husband has taught me a lot about that. Um, and then what I also love is I love to go and watch them play golf. And so I live in Oklahoma, but quite often I travel, um, especially if it's in Texas, Arkansas, um, or we're going out to Florida next week. And I get to watch these girls play golf and I get to walk and I get to talk with their families, their parents, get to hear their stories. Um, and it's just, it's a joy. And I'm, I'm telling you, Brandon, more than anything, like I learn more. Um, the Lord is using these people in my life to teach me about his character and about him. Um, and then another one thing we do, which has been very consistent and beautiful, is we have this community of golfers and we meet every Thursday on a Zoom call. Um, and we go through scripture in the Bible and we have discussions and we talk about life together. We pray for each other. Um, and we just do life together. And I've seen friends, friendships form. So girls mm. um, who live in different parts of the country, but then show up and they accidentally bump into each other on a practice putting green before mm. they tee off. And they're like, wait, you were on that cool. Zoom call. You're yeah. a Christian, you know? And then it starts those connections. Yeah. Um, so That's cool. Yeah. You mentioned you mentioned Florida next week. We're excited to to have you uh, come down and be the chaplain at our uh, uh, women's golf national championship. So look forward to spending some time with you down there. Um, but that's all the time we have today. Uh, really enjoyed uh, getting to have this conversation with you, um, getting to hear your story. Uh, so thank you for joining us on King Chasing today. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks again to Sarah for sharing her journey on overcoming a severe car accident to return to the golf course, how she came to know Christ, and what she's doing now with Global Golf. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the King Chasing podcast on whatever app you use to listen. We would also appreciate it if you encouraged others to listen and subscribe. Once again, we're thankful to you for tuning in and supporting us. Join us next time on King Chasing. Take care, everyone.